Henry VIII is most infamously remembered today for the fact he had six wives and he was a king whose final years were ruthless. He would execute two of his wives, turn on his closest friends, and he was known for his temper and short fuse. But the king also became huge and grotesque, and his final wife Catherine Parr is remembered today as a woman who was a survivor. The king's health had been in decline for a number of years following his jousting accident, and he was at the point where he was being carried around most of the time by courtiers, and he did very little walking of his own. But Catherine Parr is believed by many to be a woman who nursed the king, but she did not necessarily do this, and she even came close to losing her own head at one point. However, Catherine Parr would, following the king's death, get remarried rather quickly, and she would then fall pregnant for the first time in her life. This resulted, however, in her death, and following this she was buried nearby to the bedchambers where she passed away. But Catherine Parr's treatment in her death was brutal, and her tomb was opened a number of times. Catherine Parr's religious beliefs and ideas were considered very radical at the time, and her beliefs were against the king in many respects, and some people believed that she was poisoning the mind of the king to make more strongly Protestant changes to the church. But inside of Hampton Court Palace, on the 12th of July, 1543, she married Henry VIII, and she was then made the first Queen of England, who was also appointed as the Queen of Ireland. She remained as the Queen until Henry VIII's death, and she would act also as a regent whilst the King was in France. But she was involved in the education of the Princess Elizabeth, the future Elizabeth I. Following the King's death, she fell in love again with Thomas Seymour, the first Baron Seymour of Sudley, who came sniffing around as soon as the King had died. Catherine and Seymour had a history together, and Seymour was power-obsessed, and he saw marrying Catherine as an opportunity to get more power and closer to the throne. He thought he would never get permission to marry the deceased king's widow from the new king, Edward VI, or the Regency Council, which was established to rule on behalf of the boy king, who was Henry VIII's son, but Seymour and Catherine married in secret, and this was kept quiet for some time before the information came to light, and then there was a huge scandal. Catherine was seen as shameful, and Edward VI was not happy. But Catherine then encountered conflict with her brother-in-law, Edward Seymour. Catherine Parr, despite never having been pregnant before or having any children, fell pregnant with the child of Thomas Seymour. And this was a huge surprise. At the time, Tudor childbirth was considered very risky and dangerous for any woman, and Catherine was slightly older at the time. This meant that any complication and consequences could have been fatal. And Catherine at the time was living at Sudley Castle, and whilst here, she helped to educate the successor of Edward VI, Lady Jane Grey, the Nine Day Queen. But inside of her bedchambers, Catherine Parr would give birth to a girl on the 30th of August 1548, and she would never really recover from this, and on the 5th of September, she would then pass away days after giving birth. Following her death, Thomas Seymour deserted the castle and her funeral was arranged and it became the first fully Protestant funeral to occur in England. The chief mourner was Lady Jane Grey and the remains of Catherine were prepared and embalmed inside of her bedchambers and they were then taken to be buried inside of St Mary's Chapel in the grounds of Sudley Castle, where she died. For Catherine, a huge and ornate tomb was made for her and this was placed in the north side of the chapel and on it an effigy of Catherine was on top, and at the base was a Latin inscription. But over the next few centuries, the Queen's remains would be disturbed and messed around with to a huge extent. In 1642, the tomb of Henry VIII's sixth wife was destroyed during the English Civil War. Round head soldiers of Parliament's army arrived, and they smashed up the chapel, and they attacked Catherine Parr's tomb and desecrated the monument. But the body of Catherine was disturbed, and the grave was shattered, and it was said that there is in the castle a goodly fair church. Here they dug up the graves and disturbed the ashes of the death. They break down the monuments. But Sudley Castle was then attacked by Parliament, and the chapel roof was demolished, and for 200 years, Catherine Parr's burial site was forgotten about. 
But in 1782, many people were looking to see new castles and sites, and a group of ladies arrived at Sudley to find the tomb of Catherine Parr. They found a block of alabaster marble from the tomb in the north wall, and some local men then dug beneath it, and two feet under the stone they found the lead coffin of Henry VIII's sixth wife. They opened the coffin, and they found the Queen's body tightly wrapped in cerecloth, and the women then cut this away, and they saw the face of the Queen for the first time in two hundred years. But as her corpse was exposed to the fresh air, for the first time in centuries, the colour in her eyes turned a different shade, and they lost their light. The women then asked the men to rebury her body, and to place it in the coffin. But then a local farmer found out about this, and he wanted to see the body of the Queen himself. It was said, In the summer of the year 1782, the earth in which Queen K. Parr lay interred was removed, and at the depth of about two feet, or very little more, a leaden coffin, or coffin, was found quite whole. Mr. Lucas had the curiosity to rip up the top of the coffin, expecting to discover within it only the bones of the deceased, but to his great surprise found the whole body wrapped in six or seven sear cloth linen, entire and uncorrupted. His unwarranted curiosity led him to make an incision through the sear cloth, which covered one of the arms of the corpses, the flesh of which was at the time white and moist. He made an incision and uncovered one of the arms, and he said the flesh was white and moist, and he also cut off a few locks of the Queen's hair as well, as some material from the cloth and her dress which she was buried in. In 1783, just a year later, the steward of the castle then directed for the grave to be opened again to see the Queen's remains, and it was said that the body had begun to decay quickly. It was also noted that shoes were on the feet which were very small, and that the Queen's proportions were extremely delicate, and that her hair was gold. Four years later, the coffin of Catherine Parr was opened again, and a local priest was curious to see her body. He found that the head of the Queen had totally decayed, and that teeth had fallen out of her mouth, and this must have been very scary to see. But he also found that the arms and her hand had turned brown, and then he recorded a sketch of her body. But yet again, her coffin would be open more times. Six years later, a group of drunk vandals entered the chapel, and they took the body of Catherine Parr out of the coffin and messed with it, and some even danced with the corpse. They then dumped this in a pile and left, and removed some of the teeth, and one man allegedly stabbed an iron bar through the torso of the former queen, before it was buried back in the ground, upside down. But then a local priest wanted to give the queen a proper burial that he believed that she deserved, in 1817, the chapel was renovated and the coffin of Catherine Parr was found upside down and the body was now just a pile of bones with a small bit of flesh and hair on it. But then she was placed inside of a stone vault and tomb for the final time. She was given a new coffin and this was also placed in the new tomb. On this coffin shows an effigy of Queen Catherine with her hands tightly clasped together and she is laid to rest still in this manner today. What happened to the remains of Catherine Parr was shocking, and her coffin was opened a number of times throughout the centuries after her death. But she was considered the lucky one of Henry VIII's wives who survived the brutality of the king. However, in her death, she was not fortunate, as what happened to her after was horrific inside of the small chapel in the confines of Sudley Castle. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.